Matthew 7, verse 22. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, and done many wonders in your name? We've already gone over this. There's no denial that that's what they did, even though they weren't believers, because Jesus said, I never knew you. Now, if we understand verse 21 as Pope, as the Pope, MacArthur and Shepherd understand that what Jesus says in verse 22, which we just read, is both unexpected and inexplicable. Yet they don't pay much attention to it. If Jesus' point in verse 21 were that faith is not enough, that good works are coming in faithfulness or obedience is also necessary in order to be saved, then Jesus should have said something like this in verse 22. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, we trusted in you alone. We had faith in you alone. We believe the Bible and your words. But, of course, Jesus says nothing of the source, sort. Instead, he reports that many people would have, will appear before him at the judgment <clears throat> and will talk about their works, not their faith. These people, the ones who present works, will be excluded from the kingdom of heaven. Let us examine this verse carefully. First, Jesus says many. At first glance, verse 21 suggests that there will be only a few among those who will say, Lord, Lord, who will be excluded from the kingdom of heaven. Jesus had said, not everyone, and sinners that we are, we jump to the conclusion that he meant almost everyone. But here in verse 22, he says, many. Many will come before Christ Jesus and speak to him, saying, Lord, Lord, and they will be excluded from the kingdom of heaven. Second, many will speak to Jesus in that day, <clears throat> the day of judgment, when every person will give an account of every thought, word, and deed done in the body. That's not believers at the judgment seat of Christ in view. Those who have not trusted alone in Christ alone will get judgment to see how well they did in terms of their works. And if they aren't perfect, they don't make it. <clears throat> we give each, we each will give an account of our lives to the Lord. <clears throat> those are those, not me. I give my account of my life to the Lord at the great white, not the great white throne judgment, but the, the judgment seat of Christ for rewards. This is whether or not you get entrance into heaven. There is no escaping this judgment, no parole, no continuance, no diversion. The author of Hebrews writes, It is appointed for men to die once, but after this the judgment. Those are two appointments each one of us will keep, death and judgment. We will be on trial for our lives. I, I can't let that go. Only those who... have decided to be judged by their works in order to enter in order enter heaven. <clears throat> now, we will not be appearing in this court as witnesses, victims, or jurors, but as defendants. Again, not believers. Believers not in view. Third, each of us will speak directly to Jesus. There will be no attorneys, no priests, no pastors, no bishops, no archbishops, no popes, no confessors, no counselors, no elders, no deacons, no church, no parents, and no friends to represent us and to speak for us. We will each speak directly to Jesus will be held individually accountable by God. <coughs> Believers, not in view, because we have the righteousness of Christ, because we have the righteousness of Jesus Christ credited to us. 
This is the basis of the idea of individual responsibility, not merely in theology, but in law as well. Individual responsibility is one of the, Christ, uh, respond, uh, the pillars of Christian jurisprudence. And those who rant against the individual and individualism are merely displaying their ignorance of or their rejection of what the Bible teaches about the role and the significance of the individual person. We, each, we will each be summoned to this divine court to face the creator of the universe. No. Our believers will be will not be held accountable for entrance into heaven based on our works. Well, we just quoted Ephesians 2, 8 to 9. For by grace you've been saved through faith. And that salvation is not of yourselves, gift of God, not by works, lest anyone should boast. We have been saved. Believers. Okay? But we will face judgment before Christ on the judgment seat of Christ for rewards. What will we say in that day? Jesus in his mercy tells us that we may Many will say to him in that day, in his mercy, tell us, tells us what many will say to him that day. First, they will acknowledge the lordship of Jesus Christ, addressing him as Lord. Not only will they say it once, they will repeat it. Lord, Lord, recognizing the gravity of the situation, they will plead for their lives. See, that's not us. We already have life. Eternal. This reputation of Lord may also suggest that they think they are on familiar terms with Jesus. Next, they will also ask Jesus a series of questions, calling the Christ himself as a witness in their defense. Notice that they will not directly assert that they have done good works. They will speak in, inter in, in interrogative, in, in interrogatory, interrogative, not declarative sentences. Because of this, their defense will actually be much stronger than their own mere declarations would have been. They will call Christ Jesus himself as their defense witness. They will ask him to testify to the facts of their lives, their prophesying, exor exercising, and wonder working. That's not me. I believed in you, Jesus. That's it. I won't be judged for what I did relative to entrance. But I will be judged for what I did relative to eternal rewards when I inevitably get there. Some commentators have tried to dismiss the claims of these defendants by suggesting that they will lie or exaggerate, that they will, they really will not have done what they will claim to have done. There is nothing in the text that supports such an accusation. That misrepresentation is a desperate device to evade what Jesus is telling us in this passage. I don't like the word us. Telling us. non Believers, believers will not face this particular judgment. Believers have already been judged at the cross for entrance into heaven. So, in this passage, yeah, I, this guy doesn't seem to get it. Uh, I like what he's saying, and all of a sudden, He's lumping believers and unbelievers together in the same judgment.
So the author goes on to say the defendants will make no direct assertions. They will ask questions. They will address these questions to Jesus, whom they will acknowledge as Lord. They will ask him to testify to the truth of their claims. They actually have will have done these things on earth, prophesying, casting out demons, and performing wonders. Now, the fact that many people will have done these things on the earth implies several things. First, it implies that these people are not mere professors without works or without practice, as we may have concluded from our superficial reading of verse 21. They are not pew warmers. They are not spiritual spectators. They are not churchgoers who show up only on Easter and Christmas. They are not those who are, have no works. These people have many works, and they will call on Jesus himself to testify to the works on earth. Theirs is not mere lip service. Theirs is not an empty profession. They will have been very active in church and in other religious endeavors. Second, not only are these people active in the churches, they are church leaders. They prophesy, they preach, they proselytize, proselytize they teach, they cast out demons, they exercise. They perform many wonders, not just a few, but many wonders. These are things publicly done, not things done in a corner or in the privacy of one's own home. Third, they will do all these works in the name of Jesus Christ. Notice that the defendants will use the phrase in your name repeatedly. They will prophesy in Jesus' name, and they will cast out demons in Jesus' name. They will perform many wonders in Jesus' name. They will be leaders in professedly Christian churches. They are not Buddhists performing these things in the name of Buddha, nor are they Hindus performing these works in the name of Shiva or some other Hindu god, nor are they Muslims doing these things in the name of Allah or Muhammad. Nor are they Jews doing these things in the name of Abraham. These are not pagans ignorant of the name of Jesus. They are professing Christians who will do all these works in the name of Jesus Christ. Because they were doing these things in the name of Jesus while on earth, they must have known something about Jesus, perhaps even that he is God. Some demons no less, such as the one whose conversation with Jesus is reported in Mark 124, they go on to say the demons, let us alone. What have we to do with you, Jesus of Nazareth? Do you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Did these defendants know as much as that demon? They were as lost as that demon. This implies, among other things, that simply acknowledging Jesus as Lord, as the Holy One of God, is not sufficient for salvation. Matter of fact, you do that for salvation, you don't get it at all. Do not the scriptures say that every knee will bow and every tongue confess that Jesus is Lord? And do not the scriptures say that some people will not be saved? It therefore follows that confessing Jesus is Lord, this is a work which negates salvation if it is done in order to be saved unto eternal life, and it is insufficient for salvation. One must believe in him, him as Savior. <clears throat> and, and that alone. Now, consider the irony of the exegetical situation. Proponents of Lord's salvation, such as Shepherd and MacArthur, appeal to this passage in Matthew 7 to support their view that belief alone in the Lord Jesus Christ is not enough for salvation. Though we must also know, know also, only, We must believe only, only, so practice the Lordship of Christ by faithfully performing works in order to be saved, no, no, practicing, no. No, you don't do it at all. Not not at all. Yet this passage clearly teaches that those who confess Jesus as Lord and perform amazing works will be excluded from the kingdom of heaven. Therefore, one,